247 online marketing has been an amazing asset to barber, my barbering uh, journey so far. Uh, I just want to thank uh, Claw Bailey for uh, I mean, everything about it is just amazing, you know, the communication, um, client uh, interactions, like the entire layout, the entire uh, integration is just absolutely, I mean, stellar. Like, you know, I can't speak highly about it enough, you know, you can customize, you know, how your clients receive notifications, uh, you know, payment in advance. Um, just reviews, everything about it has really helped my uh, barbering journey, as I said, so far. And um, just I highly recommend it, you know, it's veteran barbers, you know, barbers just getting started. Um, whatever you need, this this business consultation helps amazing. And I highly recommend it to anyone who's looking to just increase, uh, you know, client retention, you know, client engagement advertising, everything about it is just amazing. All right, welcome everyone. How are you guys doing today? Glad to be here. I was a little technical difficulty we had there, um, but we're just checking this out. Ooh. There we go. All right, now we're back to where I was supposed to be. I'm uh, sorry for that little mess up there, but hey, that's the things when you're doing this stuff live by yourself some things you might miss in the beginning but hey this is truly live so thank you guys for being here at the how to grow your your barber business in 90 days i want to show with share with you exactly how it can be done and i'm and i want to promise you something here guys um, um in this meeting in this in this in this live event i'm really really going to deep dive and share with you um, exactly how it is done um how i got my barber shop clients thus far able to go from barely working to working 12 hour days right um to barely to start building up their clientele um as little as 90 days so we start getting them consistently and properly so if you want to do a part-time you want to fill up your fridays and saturdays right whatever it may be thursday friday and saturday man that's what all you want to do it works for that as well but it also can work for those who are looking to make six figures as a barber as well and i'm going to promise you, i'm going to share you share with you later um today exactly how that's going to happen so one of the things I kind of want to just kind of touch base with you, this is really specifically um, for barbers who own barbershops, all right? And and if you are a barber that owns a barbershop, um, I'm telling you right now, the way I'm about to sh share with you is going to show you how um, you can go from no clients to getting clients predictably, consistently, and properly, not only for yourself, but if you actually have other barbers that are written out chairs from you as well, um, it could also work for them. Um, so... This is really, really a uh, pretty cool thing. And then, trust me, if you guys stay to the end, I am really, literally show you how you can make $109,000 and some change just working five days out of the week, right? And only seven hours a day, okay? So I'm going to show you that towards the end of this webinar if you stick around. All right, now, I know, um, like most of us, we have... Um, and when we're in business, no matter what kind of business you're in, we all have these certain hurdles that we have to overcome. And business is like a steeplechase, right? And so if anyone's not familiar with the steeplechase, steeplechase um, um, is basically a long distance running event. It's about 33,000 meters long, roughly just a little shot of two, two miles. Um, and then what you have to end up doing, you have to jump over these hurdles, right? And then you have to jump it over these long stretches of water as well and run you know, 30, uh, around 3000 meters. So you got distance running, you got hurdles, you got long jumping It's like whole many different st skill sets. You have to be at least decent at in order to ultimately win the race. Right. And, and like in business, what is winning the race? 
winning the race for us, right, is making the revenue goals that we wanted to achieve. Um, actually having clients, right, um, that we actually do business for, do business with, right, and able not only having clients but as having clients that allows us to make the revenue that we want to achieve, right. And so, um, business doesn't matter if you're a barbershop owner, a barber, if you're an entrepreneur, it doesn't matter. We all have these turtles and we have multiple things in the race that we have to be good at, right? So like we're saying, steeple chase, you gotta be in, you gotta be have endurance because you gotta be able to finish the race first off, right? You gotta learn how to hurdle over the hurdles properly, right? And consistently. And you gotta learn how to long jump over the, um, over the, the water trench. And not only that, you also have to, you also race against other competitors. So we also have com com competition um, even in business, right? There's other barbers out there that are doing the exact same thing that you're doing, right? So we don't have uh, a solo market, a, a monopoly on haircuts or monopoly on marketing or monopoly on fitness, right? Or monopoly on cereal or monopoly on TV shows, right? It doesn't matter uh, what it may be. We always have competition. And so we're fighting against all these different things. So I truly, truly understand that there's a lot of things that we as business owners have to overcome. And I'm going to share with you exactly what that's going to look like in this presentation that I'm sharing with you guys today. So now, now I, I know you've probably been through type of marketing webinars plenty of times before, and you heard it all um, probably before, right, as far as when it comes to marketing. Um, and you probably heard some stuff, you tried, it didn't work, right? Or you heard some stuff, didn't make quite it was unclear to you, didn't make sense. Right, whatever, it may, whatever it may be, right? Um, you might have tried some stuff. It worked for a little bit, then it stopped working. That happened to me, right? All three of those things have happened to me, um, and so it was really, really confusing. But what I'm going to share with you today is what the exact strategy I'm working that I'm going to share with you today is actually working right now. It's been working for a long time, for over 12 years now, and it's still working today. And I have refined it over 12 years to even perfect it even more. But what I'm going to share with you today is actually working today and it's not no generic marketing technique. It's really specific for barbers, especially if you're a barber shop owner. OK, so is this for you? And like I said, it's for you. This this event, this this training here is going to be for you because if, especially if you are a barber shop owner, because the marketing strategy that I'm sharing with you it's specific to barbershop owners. Now, if you're just a barber written out a booth rent from a barbershop owner, trust me, text your barbershop owner, tell them to come online because it's really going to be territory. There's a certain strategy that I use that requires the barbershop owner's permission. So that's why I'm telling to barbershop owners. Okay. Now, I I kind of alluded to uh, later, and if, if you're on the chat, just kind of tell me what is your struggle, right? What is your struggle? As far as uh, barbering, what are some of your, your marketing frustrations that you may have uh, as far as uh, being a, a barbershop owner, um, getting clients or whatever? Now, I, I, can, I can guarantee your struggle is going to be no different than my struggles. The way I got started off, um, still no different. Probably because still still some struggles that are there. Uh, struggles are always been there when we're in business, but, you know, they just get better. Uh, and still no different than the struggles that from my current um, clients, right? And so, you know, really what it comes down to, um, you know, really what I found out, like I kind of alluded to before is that this marketing strategy sometimes becomes unclear, right? And then it's, it's plus there's so many, just tell me, just tell me in the chat, this, this resonates with you. There's just so many different strategies that make it seem as if, um, that make it seem as if it's just, you know, I don't know, like overwhelm, right? You're just overwhelmed. Like, I don't know if I should do social media. I don't know if I should do paid advertising. I don't know if I should do SEO. I don't know if I should do content marketing. I don't know if I should do YouTube videos. I don't know if I should do this. I don't know if I should do this. I don't know if I should do that. There's so much overwhelming me, right? So, I mean, it gets, gets so overwhelming. And so that, uh, that is part of the struggle and the story. So even though you're going out there, you know, you have a, you have a service that you can do very well. You pass, you know, you got your certificate from barber school and you, you know, you pass that. So now, you know, you can, you have confidence cutting people's hair but now the hardest part which they don't really probably teach you a lot in barber school is how to get that clientele let's talk about word of mouth but things are changing fast which leads me to my next struggle right things in the marketing world change so fast because technology is changing extremely fast extremely rapidly and so sometimes you learn a strategy but then now that strategy becomes old or it doesn't work they like it was like someone taught you you know, seven months ago or maybe two years ago. Now it doesn't work anymore. It happened to me. I mean, trust me, when I started, I started off, I started doing, um, 
I'm starting doing paid advertising with Google and everything. All the Google, you know, clicks are like really, really cheap, like a couple pennies, 10 cents, 20 cents, 30 cents. So by the time I got my strategy again and started doing it, man, the, the pricing went up significantly. It was like $2, $3, man. I got Google slapped in on top of that. I mean, so things are just changing drastically. Um, and quickly and so if you're not in the marketing realm right and you're not staying on top of the trends you find out that you know that what you might have learned or what you thought you're going to apply or that you did apply implement is not working anymore because something's changed right now it's phenomenal in, in the early 2000s right that was changing a lot uh 2009 2008 2010 12 13 right this is Google was changed significantly, man. A lot of stuff people were getting away with. They got the black hat versus the white hat strategies and stuff like that. So Google's really trying to, to clean out um, all that mess. And Facebook's going to go through the same transitions now. As you know what, Facebook, right? Facebook is going to advertise on Facebook now. You know, Apple says, hey, you know, we got we got this privacy thing that we need to protect. Facebook, you guys are not uh, protecting people's data. So we got to implement these privacy things now. So now things have changed on the Facebook front. Right. And so I constantly things are always changing. It's always so, you know, a year from now, you know, something might be working, but then again, it's not working. Right. And so it was a constant struggle trying to figure out what exactly works. Right. And so and then on top of that. Right. And if you're not the kind of person that's outgoing, and extrovert, you're more introverted. Right. And you're more of a shy type of person. And, you know, going out there and asserting yourself and like grabbing people from the from the street and have them come into your barbershop to cut their hair, that type of thing. Right. It can be very overwhelming and difficult um, to market and get people. Right. So, you know, a couple of my clients, you know, have that more of the introverted type of uh, personality. And, um, you know, and so they were trying things like, you know, um, this word of mouth type of advertising, telling their friends to tell other friends, right, you know, about their business. And, you know, you get a couple here and there, but nothing enough to really sustain a business or sustain a, a lifestyle that you would like, right? And so, or they would try to do yard signs, stuff like that. You put a yard sign out front of the, of the business, right? You know, if people are walking, they can see it, but nothing really, nothing's really there. Um, you know, you always had to, you know, you got your yellow pages back in the day, but no one really started looking at yellow pages. Everyone started going online on the internet, right? And so things were changing drastically. And so one of the struggles is, and one of the things that I found out in like, in my, in my own personal business is like, these things are changing so quickly. And some of the things that were working seem to take a lot of time, right? And so that's our human nature. So our human nature is trying to find something that's going to give us a quick hit, like the microwave generation, like throw in the microwave, you know, 20 seconds, boom, it's warm, we're going to eat, right, type of thing. It's cooked, it's done, right? But some things that take over time, like blogging. My gosh, blogging is so time-consuming. You know, this whole content marketing comes so time-consuming, but now we got videos, so it makes it a little bit easier, right? Because you just talk. Uh, but before, you had to write some stuff down and think about what you're going to say. Um, so it become a constant struggle. So just let me know in the chat what your struggles are, and I'll be curious to see what they are as well. But going through all these discoveries and going through all this frustration with my own marketing um, before I really got started in, in deep dive and helping other clients, right, I, I, I kind of realized, like, this, this, I was overwhelmed. There's too much going on, and it's out, it becomes outdated. So I really need to get back to the basics, right? Get the best of the best that still seems to be working, that seems to be... Um, uh, seems to be bulletproof to changes in time, bulletproof in technology, right? I need to know the foundational stuff that's really working. And I really need a system, a comprehensive system that gets everything together. So it dawned on me one day, and I'll show you here this picture of Bruce Lee. If you guys know Bruce Lee, the famous martial, art, martial artist in the 70s and, uh, you know, mid-70s, early 80s, right? He was... Uh, a martial art artist, and uh, he was a great martial artist. He's one of the best out there. Became very famous across the world uh, for his martial arts, and his martial arts that he that he that he created um, it was called Jeet Kune Do. And uh, one of the cool things about Jeet Kune Do is, is his philosophy is that he realized because he was a he was a martial artist right from China. He and he studied different types of martial artists, martial. Um, you know, martial art forms, right? And he had one form that he finally let, you know, kept hold on to, right? And in this picture, right, he's with, uh, if you guys ever seen the movie uh, over here, if you ever seen the movie here, here he is, right? The movie with Ip Man, IP Man, right? So IP Man was, you know, he had, he was famous for his style of uh, martial arts. 
and um and he learned under him as well right in the beginning and so one of the cool things about bruce lee is that he found out that some f martial art at the time was based upon forms and it was limiting his ability to be able to free fall and be able to free fight right you know be free in his fighting and be able to quickly adapt to changes that would occur in an actual fight right so he had these special forms and, and roots and and, and, and processes that he had to, you know, that he had to use in order to fight. And that became to the point where it was bogging him down and slowing him down. So he ended up creating a philosophy, which is called Jeet Kune Do, which is not really, in, in, in his quote that I, I'm going to read here, his quote is, I have not invented a new style, um, a composite, modified, or otherwise that is set from, that is set within district, distinct from as a part of this method or that method so what he's saying is he's not really saying that you know he's got this method here this method here this method here this method here what he's saying here is he's taking probably the best of all the things and so he's trying to use the best of the best but also allowing for flexibility in the philosophy of using those those different styles right in his fighting which made him one of the greatest you know martial artists in the world okay and so the same thought there. I was like, "Wow, this is this is this is this is really um, valuable thinking because you got all these different social media strategies, right? YouTube, uh, Twitter, Facebook, Google SEO, content marketing, all this stuff, right? That you have to do, uh, you know, conversion rate optimization, all these different things that are out there that you have funnels, market funnels, sales funnels, uh, copywriting, all these different things you got to do." in order to be, be successful in marketing, but which one do you hone in on, right? Well, you got to be able to be free in your marketing strategy. And that's kind of what I was sitting back and thinking, saying, what can I use to be free that is foundationally sound, that can make it through the test of time, right? And that will allow us to be, allow me and to be able not only be free for my, my own business, but free for my clientele, is to be able to move around freely and adjust quickly to what's happening in the environment right um so that's and so that's what i discovered and then after some more thinking and philosophy and, and meeting some other great uh marketers um other russell bronson's 101 and i got his book dot com streakers and stuff things started clicking for me um i realized that you know i need a contextual system in order to make this thing to work not just one strategy but a system that makes this thing work that it can allows you flexibility right and so before i kind of go through that i kind of want to share with you guys just real quick um uh, what i call the seven figure diagnosis guide right now this is anyone going from zero dollars up to seven figures you know multi-million dollars here that wants to be a you know a millionaire that type of deal and so what is it where are you in this where are you in this journey right there's a certain journey that you have to go through to go from zero up to seven figures right and then where are you now so i created this this illustration here to kind of share with you and i'm going to kind of walk you through it um i think it's pretty pretty important but as you can see here as you as you start from the bottom on here and then we're gonna start from the left hand side and i kind of want you to look at this i want you to think about where you're where you are in your journey okay so you can see here um the diagnosis here right you know is is listed here we got striving living thriving and abundance Right, obviously striving is if you're the bottom tier right here. So you're making less than five hundred thousand a year, you know, you're considered in that striving stage or you're striving to make your business really extremely profitable and to the point where um it's self sustaining, at least to the point where you can, you know, operate freely, have be a little bit somewhat comfortable. Um but if you're not quite over five thousand mark, you're not quite there yet, right? You might have some high debt. Some of the symptoms are you have high debt. You know, you can't afford marketing more than 5000 a month. Um, you, you're unclear in your marketing strategies you're supposed to be using. You're trying a bunch of different things. Some things work, some things don't work, but it's not consistent, okay? Um, you got ineffective advertising. It's not working. You got ineffective online presence. Like, you're not found on the internet, right? Those are the things that are some symptoms of you being a product of all in this striving category. And then if you go over to the right, right, the solution is you need clarity. And that's what this that's what we're doing here today i'm trying to give you clarity 
on the roadmap that you need in order to get out of that whatever wherever you are where you're not making enough money and you're not making that revenue that you're looking for. Like I said before, if you stay to them, I'm gonna show you exactly how you can make six figures as a barber, $109,000 a year. It's very simple. Only working seven hours a week. I mean, seven hours a day, five days a week. All right. And so you got to develop a very clear plan, right? So what I'm going to share with you today is a structural, clear plan that's going to allow you to get move up and achieve, you know, those numbers. Now, I was, and obviously, barbers is tough. You guys probably make half a million dollars just by yourself, you know, cutting hair. I'm not saying that you can do 500. I'm not saying you can do a half a million dollars by just cutting, cut, cutting hair, right? You don't need to do more things in order to do that. But I will say you can make, and it's mathematically proven. I'm going to prove it to you here in a little bit that you can make. One hundred nine thousand dollars a year, just working five days a week, seven hours a day. I'm going to prove it to you here in, in a little while, so stay tuned, stay with me, okay? So then, if you want to go up even higher, so you want to start getting through you know close to a million dollars now, right? So now you're going to the living area, right? So some of your systems for that would be, you know, you got some debt, but not a lot, you know, you know, consistent uh, cash flow coming in now. Um, but you're still a, a one-man show or one doctor show. In this particular case, most doctors open a higher range, right? But you're a one-man show um, in this case. And so, you know, you're kind of just doing your own. But for you as a barber, if you do make half a million dollars, you cannot be a one-man show. It's not going to happen. You're limited basically by the number of hours in a day and the price that you can actually charge. Now, if you're doing celebrities haircuts and you can charge a 1000 bucks a cut, then, hey, it's a totally different story. But if you're normal, average Joe person cutting hair, you know, to the average person like me, you know, you're probably going to be around 35, maybe 40 ducks, you know, in between 30, 40 ducks for a haircut, maybe a little bit less, maybe 25, depends on where you are in, in, in the United States, right? Um, but so you can only do so much, there's only so much time in the day, right? But it is, you know, mathematically possible for you to make six figures You just by you yourself cutting hair. If you want to get to these next tiers, right, we got to start doing, so we got to start using some other resources to multiply you, right? One thing that people do is, obviously, other barbers can come to the shop, and you get a percentage out, or you get booth rent. That's what most people do. That's how you increase that income, right? There's some other things you can do, right? Um, that we can do is let some high-ticket type items, maybe, you know, that you do that allows you to get even more money, right? Maybe you do some training yourselves. Maybe, especially nowadays, and it's doing this pandemic, and people don't want to come in. Maybe teach people how to do the haircuts, stuff like that. Something that you can be, you know, passive income for you that constantly comes in, that doesn't rely on you to be there anymore. That's how you start opening up more revenue for you, right? You can also expand your barbershop business to open up more um, locations around your metropolitan area, right? That's another thing you can do. Right, this to increase that revenue. Now you get revenue off of all those people in that shop, right? And so you're just trying to leverage yourself. So as you can see here, the solution to get to, you know, seven figures is basically you got to leverage other resources in order to get there, right? And then once you get to the top, you're really what we call in abundance phase, and you're really amplifying um, your work, and you're offering things what I like to call low ticket offers, which are small things, but you can, but you can sell a lot of them. So you got, a, you got a low dollar product, but you can sell a lot of them to a lot of people. Now that you establish yourself as a, you know, as a, as an excellent barber for your clientele, you kind of move to something what I call high ticket, um, item, which would be something like if you're doing like maybe private consulting for people. Um, and then you got mid tickets with things that's small, maybe some training, whatever that may be. And then you got low ticket guys, like maybe some small kits that you give people, right? Or products that you give people for their grooming needs, right? So that's kind of the journey. So I'm kind of interested in seeing where you guys think you are in the journey. Go ahead and leave that in the chat. It would be great for me to hear from you to see where you are in that journey as well. All right. Okay. Oops. So with that being said, let me share with you. The actual strategy that I use um, that I call the introvert marketing method. Um, I specifically call that for a reason. Introvert marketing method is designed to help um, business owners, small business owners, you know, get you know, twice to 10 times more leads and sales in 90 days. It's really, really a, a great method to go through and start doing. I've consistently done it so far in 90 days. I'm able to, you know, double people's traffic i'm able to get them 10 times more sales than what they're you know on their investment with me so it's their strategy that i use and a strategy i want to share with you that i know is going to work for you as well 
And so it's really good strategy because it allows you to not only you don't have to worry about being a pushy salesperson if you're not an extrovert, right, and be all pushy sell tactics, right. Also, if you're not really a techie type person, right, the stuff that shows some basic tech. But I think if you know how to operate a smartphone, you can do some of this some of this tech. And another thing, if you're not really out, out outgoing, you do not need to have a large social media following. Do you need to have a social media pres uh, social presence? Yes, but you don't need to have huge following in order to do so. And I'm going to kind of walk you through the three main phases today. Are first phase of the plan of the mar introvert marketing method is called the plan, right? And then the second phase is your traffic, and then the third phase is optimized. So really, how does this work? So when you're in the planning phase, right, it's really very key that you have to be very, very clear about what you want, about what you want to get out of this business. What are your goals? Some people don't like to hear, oh, here we go again, this goal setting thing. But trust me, remember I told you about the marketing stuff that, you know, seems to be unclear that's not working because you know why you're focusing on a tactic, but you don't have your reason why, your motivation, why you want to do it. And so it doesn't work. You have to understand your reason why you want to do something in order to get it to work. So if you have a plan, you have to plan. It's a good old saying, if you, if you uh, fail to plan, you fail to succeed, right? And so uh, if you have a plan, even if it's not a great plan, but you have a plan, at least you have a, a, a crisp, crystal clear idea of what you want from your business, specifically financially, what do you want to make from your business, right? So I told you, I'm going to tell you guys, you can financially, seriously, you as one solo barber can make $109,000 a year just from cutting hair. I'm going to share with you that in a little bit. But it's true, you got to have a plan what you want, okay? If you want to make more than that, okay, what's the plan how you're going to get there, right? And so not only you have to have a plan, but you also got to understand who your clientele is going to be. Who, you, who do you want to cut? What, you know, who, who, what type of hairstyle do you enjoy creating? What type of hair do you enjoy creating? Curly hair, straight hair? What, I mean, I don't know, right? So what, you have to be clear on that because that's the kind of people that you want to attract, right? Most marketing fails because your marketing is trying to uh, please everybody, right? Every male, I'm a barber, so I'm going to cut any male hair or any, any person's hair that lives in, you know, my a radius of 20 miles from my shop, right? It doesn't work that way. You can't be that general. You have to be purposeful and 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 who you want to work with. You got so much bogged down to the niche, right? And and that's how you become, um, you know, something that you know people are attracted to because you're different than everyone else, and you prove not to be different, right? People are also attracted to people that, that they can feel like they know, like, and trust. And if you're more like someone that has similarities to you, then they know that they like you, right? If you're a big football fan and then you like, I'm a big football fan, college football fan. So, you know, if people know that, they'd be more attracted to you. So if this your person, people are attracted to personality, especially in the service business. It's all about personality. Also, you got to do your, you know, be at show good work. It's all about personality. So you have to be clear on who you want, right? And then the other thing is you got to know what kind of strategy you're going to actually use. You got to pick the right strategies to get the people that you want that's going to give you the money that you want, right? So you got to pick the right strategy. So then the second thing is we go we go to traffic. Now, once you have all the big plan and have it all laid out and have it all built out, now you got to get traffic to that plan, to that strategy, to your website. And there's three things that we do. I call it the omnipresent strategy, which is going to place you everywhere someone searches for a business like yours, right? And the key thing is, well, Claude, you just said I got to be specific on where I'm, I'm, I'm marketing to. But yes, you're specific in your marketing message, but not on where you position yourself. Because you have we have no clue exactly where everyone's going to be located. So you got to position yourself everywhere, and then your marketing message is going to fine-tune those people to your funnel. Okay? That's how you're going to get the highly qualified clientele that you want already. And you don't have to worry about dealing with tire kickers or people that are not going to be suited for your type of, you know, haircut style. And then the third thing I like, to, I mean, the, the other second part of the traffic strategy is what I call Oracle positioning. And this is where you're going to position yourself as an authority to attract highly qualified um, clientele to you that are eager to purchase your service or make appointments with you online. And it's a very simple way that we do this, right? You just got to show people that you know how to cut hair. You don't have to worry about blogging a whole bunch, but just show people examples of your final haircut. All right. And then the third and the sixth, the third thing of this traffic strategy is what we'd like to do is now we want to multiply and accelerate 
our marketing, our traffic by advertising. Advertising should be used to accelerate. You need to know, understand your numbers before you start paying for traffic. You know, make sure your funnel is working. You got to make sure your strategy is working somewhat before you start paying for traffic. Now, you, if you have a bunch of money to, to waste, then you can jump right in and pay for traffic. But I specifically put advertising last in the traffic strategy because once you have your foundation and where you are present everywhere, people are looking for you, and it's plus it's really, really simple and low-tech to do. It doesn't take a brand. All you do is click at one button. <laughs> and then, you know, once you start positioning yourself everywhere on the net, and then, you know, you start getting people proof that you know what you're doing all over the internet as well and then when you start advertising and people see your ad and then naturally what they want to go do is do some dig do some more digging some more research on you and then what they're going to they find nothing else on you then they're going to be they're not going to really trust you all right it's going to be hard for them to trust you but if they find more stuff about you everywhere then they're like, oh this guy's this guy's legit right this person's legit so i, I want to sign up for him so and you know i'd be thinking okay club you know, it sounds great, but what about when I'm starting out? Well, that's why we, 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 start, we do an omnipresence first. That's only to get your name and information out there everywhere, right? That's a key step. Second step is start positioning all your proof out there that you know what you're doing, right? That's going to take time to build up, but that's okay. And then once that's built up enough, and you know organically once that's built up enough, because you're going to start getting this organic traffic that's consistently flowing through. Now, if you want to take it to the next level, that's when we start advertising our best content that's out there, all right? So then the third phase of the introvert marketing method is what we call is what i call optimizer so optimizing is now i'm going to optimize our strategy we're going to identify the weak link in our strategy the the, the, the steps in our strategy now converting the best to give us the results that we want and once we identify that weak area in our funnel right as a, as a process that we use to do that once we identify then we're able to go into what i like to do an experiment and so now we do this. We don't just, okay, we identify the error, so let's just change everything. No, we don't just change our website page, right? We do make changes, but we, what we do is we copy it, and what we do is we split test. So we have two versions of our web page now. We have the original version, and then we have the new version of the, what we copied and changed. And then we send traffic to both of those, those pages, and we find out which one converts better, right? So we let that run for a little while, and then once we got statistical significance, and then we pick the winner, and then we get the new page is better than the old page. Now we switch everything to new page, right? So then that becomes a winner. And that's what we implement. And certain strategy methods you do that. Now, this is the whole cool part, man. I remember Bruce Lee giving you flexibility and that type of thing. This is where the flexibility comes in. A lot of marketing strategies forget about this optimization stage because now they're rigid. They think, I did something, now I'm done. But a lot of times, no, you're not done. You have to constantly continue to improve. And there's a method of ways you can find out what you're doing wrong and you can change without starting all over from scratch. Especially if you're following this nine-step process that I have called the introvert marketing method. Okay, so that's I mean that is what we that is that is the outline of the introvert marketing method. So now what I want to do for you is I actually want to show you and share with you as I promised, right? I want to show you exactly how you can make hundred and nine thousand dollars annually as a barber. All right, it's pretty simple. So in order to do this, we're gonna to go to the good old calculator. All right. And so on this calculator, I'm going to share with you exactly how you can make $109,000, and $109,000, It is working only seven hours a day, five days a week. Now, go ahead and get your calculator out there uh, as well, if you like. Uh, you can share that with me. And uh, one of the things that we're going to do here is um, I want you to write down some numbers. And I'll walk you through it. So when you have a piece of paper, let me know in the chat. Really appreciate it. And then we'll go ahead and jump in. So if you're not making over six figures right now, and I ain't saying you got to make 200000 I'm talking about just low six figures, like barely breaking $100,000. If you're not there, then this is going to be for you, and I want you to write this stuff down. All right, so write down $109,500.30 at the top of your page. And then I want you to write underneath that. I want you to write, write working seven hours a day. And then I want you to work working only five days a week. So you get two days off. You only work seven hours. So if you want to do eight, you know, you know, you got seven hours of actual working, cutting hair, and then you got an hour or whatever, break time, whatever you want to do with it. Okay. Um now in order to make this amount of money, you gotta be able to cut at least two heads in one hour. Can you guys do that? Let me know in the chat. Can you cut two heads in one hour? So if you can cut two heads in one hour, 
then I want what I want you to do is um say yes in the chat. Then I want you to say okay. Now I'm assuming the average haircut price is around thirty dollars. I think it might be a little bit on the low side, but around thirty dollars, especially now with the COVID interest rates flying, interest rates going up, about thirty dollars probably with the average, you know, rate for a haircut, you know, going right now. So at thirty dollars a haircut, right? So let's go here, go to my calculator. So we got thirty dollars a haircut. All right. So but no, before that, so third, before we do that, let me go back to my. So we got thirty dollars haircut. So now, so now what we're gonna need to do is need to figure out how many clients you need, how many clients you can cut in one day. So it's real simple, right? It's just seven. So you work seven hours a week, and you got two cuts. You can cut uh, two cuts in one hour, right? So that's fourteen clients a day that you need to cut to make a hundred and nine thousand, a hundred nine thousand five hundred dollars and thirty cents, right? Fourteen clients a day. All right. That seems reasonable. Let me know in the chat. Let me know in the chat. That seems reasonable. All right, now. So now what we're going to do is take that 14 clients a day and multiply that by 30. $30, which is $30, which is the average price you charge, right? So that means now you're making $420 a day. So you make $420, $420 a day in the chat. So let me know if you're making $420 a day right now in the chat every day, five days a week. All right, now. So we said we're going to work five days a week. So you're going to take this 420 we're gonna multiply it by five days a week. That's gonna make us. That means we're pulling in twenty one hundred dollars a week in order for us to make one hundred nine thousand, one hundred nine thousand five hundred dollars and thirty cents. All right. That's what we need to do now. So we know that there's actually fifty two weeks in a year, or specifically, to the point is fifty two point one four three weeks in a year. So we take that and multiply it by twenty one hundred. That's how you get $109,500.30. Okay. Now, you said, Claude, that means I'm working every week, five days a year of the entire year. There's no time for breaks, like or vacation or whatnot. Well, cool. I understand. Remember, I was going to show you what you can do with seven hours a day, five days a week. Now, let's say you want to take four weeks of vacation. You want to take four weeks of vacation. All right. So, you remember that number, right? So, you got four weeks. Okay. So, now we're going to subtract four weeks so all we're going to do is subtract $109,500.30 from $2,100 times four because now you're going to lose $8,400 so you're going to give up so you going on vacation for four weeks is basically costing you $8,400 alright but that might be beneficial for you because you need to break spend time with family, friends hunt, you know do whatever your, your hobbies are alright and so what do you end up with you still end up with $101,000, $101,000, You're still making six figures. Okay, you see what I'm saying? So if you could, if you think that you can go ahead and do seven, 14 cuts a day, then that's where you are right there, all right? So that's the math. That's how you can make six figures. So it is very possible. If you're not making six figures, guys, I really want to help you and show you exactly how we can do it for you. Uh, I really, all I need you to do is very simple. If you want me to show you that, this is, I have a free discovery call for you um, that we can go through and I can kind of show you, understand where your business is at. Uh, it's about 50, 20 minutes free consultation. Just go to 247onlinemarketing.com. You'll see the link in, in the description here. Just go there, uh, follow the instructions, schedule an appointment with me. And then we'll talk one on one, and I see if I can help you achieve, you know, this amount or whatever amount that you want to achieve. Because I'll be honest with you, some of my barber clients they don't want to work 14 days. For I mean, they don't want to work. They don't want to cut that many heads in a day. Um, they're not interested in making that much money, right? And so that's okay. Like I said, they're happy, you know, with their time making less money, right? But if you want to make that much money, it can be done. Uh, it's up to you. So I'm not pushing you to make 101,000, 109,000. I'm just saying that's the potential for you to do one by yourself. And you can actually make more. You say you want to make eight hours. You want to work eight hours a day, right? You know, 10 hours a day, five days a week. Or you're going to work six days out the, you know, out the year. You can, you know, whatever, six days out the week. You know how to play the numbers now, right? But I'm just saying it's possible for you to make six figures as a solo um, barber yourself, okay? And if you want to make more than that, like I showed, I showed you the kind of roadmap. There's more things that we can do, and let's talk about it. So feel free. This is all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this. If you like it, please, if you enjoyed this, please like it, share it, comment, subscribe to the channel because um, I'm going to be putting up more um, training like this as well, uh, walkthroughs and breakthroughs and all that good stuff. So 
Um, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification button so you get notified when the next video is uploaded or when I go live again. So thank you so much. God bless you. And I look forward to talking to you guys in the near future. Thank you now. Bye.